Hello and welcome to LVS Perspectives today. Today we're joined by John Taylor who has um, been in school all morning, you've been here before as well, and he has been delivering online safety workshops to, this morning you were with uh, years one, years one to, to six, uh, one to six this one morning, to six. you've already been in and visited our seven and eight and this afternoon it's going to be the turn of year nine and upwards, all the way up to year 13. Now, John works for, um, well, you're, you're the founder of Be Safe Online and you're a consultant offering guidance to schools um, on online safety policies as well as delivering workshops to, That's right. um, to uh, pupils. So today we thought we'd have a session as well for um, our parents and guardians because as a parent myself, I know that that minefield of keeping your child safe online, well, we do mm. need a little bit of help with it. I mean, we have things come into school all the yeah. time, but as a parent as well, it's, it's always really good to pick up tips and really understand mm. how to be safe online. So yeah. I'm gonna hand over to you. We will ask questions <laughs> we will as, as, around, as yeah. we go along because um, we've probably got lots of questions. And, sure <laughs> and if you have any questions as well, please do type them in and we can ask the questions to John. Okay, Thank so you. I'll hand over to you. Yeah, it's been great talking to years uh, one to six. And, th and the first things that always strike me, whatever school I go to, and I'm very fortunate to travel the world speaking to international uh, British schools as well as schools in the UK. It's the fact that when you ask questions of years one and two, who has their own smartphone, who has their own Nintendo Switch, Xbox, three, you, know, you don't expect so many hands to go up. And then how many of them know their parents' password? How many know their parents' passcode mm. on devices? They, they know these things. Um, and, but I also try to get across, especially I've just speaking to years five and six, you know, online safety, it's predominantly to them about stranger danger, which I totally get. Mm. But when you consider that they've, there's a 70 to 80% uh, uh, chance that they're gonna be hurt or bullied or comments by a fellow student, Online safety is far greater, it's far, it's far bigger than just stranger danger because having spent 30 years in the police, 10 years pretending to be a 12 year old girl so we could identify predators, yeah, they exist. Mm. But really for me, it's about the possibility of behavior that um, let's say is inappropriate that will affect a student's possibilities of getting to university or getting a job or getting promotion when they're in the mid 20s. That is all part of the online safety world where we are now. It's not just going to be about, um, if you like, stranger danger. And of course, what LVS do, which in, in, in my honest opinion, and not enough schools do, is you have this massive whole school approach to it. So for your junior school, you've got um, Safer Internet Day next yeah, week. On the, I know you're doing it on Thursday, and I'm busy at other schools. But when you look at schools now, there's a legal requirement that's now been seen under keeping children safe in education that requires all students uh, to have um, individual workshops, just went, went too far there. Now they're gonna be quite bespoke because the way that a years one and two, three and four use it compared to years nine uh, to 13, completely different. Mm. But what the school, I'm, I'm saying this not because they, I've been asked to say it, but I'm saying it because you do it. Mm, mm, you yeah. make sure there's, that you get involved in um, themed uh, days like anti-bullying. Mm. You've got children, uh, uh, you've got obviously Safer Internet Day and you do workshops like this from people like me. That's so important yeah. yes. um, because not only is it a legal requirement now by um, obviously when you get inspected <laughs> by um, uh, uh, I suppose yours is ISI, ISI. Yeah. 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 Um, or Ofsted if it's state schools, <clears throat> you will be asked what are you doing about online safety. That came in last year. And because of that, there has to be like this uh, whole school approach towards it and what do parents know, parent awareness, you've got staff training, governor training, you've got pupil, it's, it's so much, as you yeah. quite rightly yeah. said about policies yeah. and acceptable use, because I'm a firm believer that devices should be used in schools. You should be able to bring your own device in, mm. whether that's a Surface Pro, whether you're a Microsoft school or whether you're an Apple school. Which we are. Which yeah. we are, yeah. 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 Exactly, yeah. so I, I'm a big firm believer of that and I was stressing, really stressing to the students already today that if you consider that you have devices, games, social media, gaming communities, they're not made to be dangerous. Mm. They become dangerous because of behavior. 
And that's the interesting thing that uh, it's interesting for the students to understand because they'll talk about hackers. They'll yes. talk about virus. Well, hang on, where are you going? What are you saying and what are you accepting? So it's that type of communication that I have because if you look at their lives, then you know the devices that they'll be using. You know the social media they may be using. A lot in year five, six, we're using um, Discord, Twitch and Steam, which mm, most parents yes. probably won't be aware yeah. of. They are 18 plus gaming communities. Oh, wow. So, you know, and, but I am a realist and I was saying that you might not be the right age. So we went through ages, Fortnite's 12, Roblox and Minecraft 13, unless you use the seven and eight plus, which doesn't allow for, um, mm. interaction with strangers. You've then got WhatsApp, the age for that is 16. You, you've got all the different ages. Most don't know it. Yeah. I don't think I knew some no, of those no, ages. It's quite shocking, myself, actually, yeah. when you say it like that. And then mm. I tend to say, well, it's all about the behavior. It's still not just about the fact that they're ages. But then if you look at what I put on the screen now about TikTok challenges, they know them. The year yeah. five or yeah. six, they were th throwing them. These are physical challenges. Uh, but then I got them to tell me, I said, well, the, the danger bit is this. How do you complete a TikTok challenge? And they answered it. They film themselves doing mm. it. Yeah. So if you film yourselves doing it, there's a thing called digital permanence. They have then filmed themselves doing a physical, demanding, dangerous task over a minute, which they talked about the no breathing, uh, the tourniquet, they, they know them. Yeah. But they're filming themselves doing something inappropriate. That's why it can affect their future because of digital permanence and yes. cyber vetting at universities and of course job applications in the future. So this starts now. If they're using devices, creating profiles and, and having poor behavior, mm. straight away parents must be involved and make sure they understand because we can see the games they mentioned today about uh, Mortal Kombat, some I've written down here. They're using them. Gosh. Wow. I, I don't oh. use them. And no. I, I jokingly said that my school year is school year 56. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's kind of age irrelevant. Um, but I, I had an honest question literally 20 minutes ago from a wonderful uh, student in year six. Well, what if my parents do let me? I said, well, it's not for me to say don't. I, I would advise not. I wouldn't recommend it because you're not 18. But then what do you do? Well, you make sure that your parents sit next to you. You play it in mute. Uh, you don't have headphones on and anything upsets you, you talk about it. You don't go there alone. But really, no child under 18 should be playing anything that's 18 plus. That's why it's 18 plus. But we have to be realistic here. But there are things also that you must be aware of. Yeah. I get asked by parents all the time, what do I think the age is? Well, if they're 10 and under, they don't need a, don't need a smartphone. I had great chats today with the years one to year four. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. No, you don't. You don't need one. There may be care issues, security issues, mm. and custody issues. I get that. There might be these wonderful phones that get used for travel cards. They get used, for, obviously, for um, the monitoring diabetes. I get mm. it. So there's a reason for it, I understand. But do they need the internet? Do they need a a camera the answer is no but they've got them so again being a realist what mm -hmm. I say about online safety is this if you've decided to go with the smartphone that's an Apple or an Android then understand this if you have your location and GPS settings on when you post on Instagram or snapchat anybody there's free mm -hmm. software that allows them to identify where they live Wow so you've got that danger straight away if you take a selfie and you're on the internet, then it will automatically go to either the Google Cloud or the Apple Cloud, so there, it's there permanently for the future. Whether it's got a file name, so we've got to understand this as parents to decide whether or when the time is right. Mm. It's, their, it's parents' job. It's, it's not a school's. difficult decision, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's not yeah. school's job, yeah. it's, it's, it's the parents' job. It's the same as social media. There are age guidance or guidelines or restrictions whatever you want to call them so straight away you know if it says 13 it's 13 instagram snapchat tiktok 13 but year five and six all over it a lot in year three and four yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so try and stick to ages if you cannot and you relent i get it there's pressure then sit next to them now I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that if you've got a young child who is aged eight, nine or 10 and wants that smartphone and, and, and then certainly um, wants social media, then okay, you relent. Well, with um, iPhones, you use family sharing. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. That comes okay. through settings, which means they cannot install any app without you giving permission on your own device. Okay, right. okay. free thing mm -hmm. to do. That's good. If you've got an Android phone, you will use what's a, it's an app called Google Family Link mm -hmm. that links up the Gmail account. So you can put that on their phone, which means they cannot install any app or download without you giving permission and you monitor their behavior and their time. And can you monitor, if they do have those apps, can you monitor what they can see? Yes, right, and you put that in as well with restrictions and okay. you can put it regarding explicit material and search criteria. You can put all this in. So whilst I'm saying stick to the ages, I'm uh, a realist that you may not, but if, you're, if you do relent, you must put these things in place okay. to keep them safe. Yeah. 18 plus games, no, uh, for me it's a no-no, uh, but if you relent, then sit with them and to play them in mute, etc. Uh, I'll move on for that because of time. Because this is what I want parents to understand. Mm -hmm. There's a thing called uh, an online behavior spectrum, which I, I, I wrote about some years ago now. When a child or us, or anybody begins, if you look at that spectrum, a child will begin at what would be called level C. They're already going up towards unacceptable, inappropriate, or illegal use of that device. Why? Well, they're too young. Right. Yeah. That's okay. automatically. So they hit the over. threshold straight away. Yeah. 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 So they start at C. So what we need to do as parents is bring them from C down to A, which is the acceptable where we are, where we boring users of it are using it for research, <laughs> Amazon holidays, <laughs> you name it, or bank. You know, that's where we want to bring them to. So we know where they're going to be. A percentage, however, will be moving up from C. So that means they're gonna to get to the area of real danger because of the way they are behaving and what they're right. doing. So that's why monitoring is key. So know this, that most children will start on that spectrum at the range towards inappropriate or unacceptable behavior. And I suppose they could move up it really quickly as yeah. well. Yeah, starting mm. there, bang, because yeah. they're, they're, so, mm. they're not being monitored. So we have to look at, well, who monitors online competence? Who, who decides? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem we've got with that is nobody does. Right, right. When we look at life as in general, you know, competence to drive a car, well, you go through about umpteen hundreds of pounds worth of driving lessons before you then get a test. Nothing happens here. So you get the device, who gives it? A parent. There's yeah. your new iPhone 14, there's your Samsung Deluxe or whatever they're going to be, going to be given. It's not schools, and yet poor old schools, I'm not saying that because I'm sitting here at the <laughs> school, but you get inspected. What are you doing? What are you doing? Mm. That's the only area that's ever inspected parents don't get asked and they're the ones me included I've got three children who are now adults one a teacher one a police officer one at university but I knew it was my responsibility to be part of their online life mm. so who actually decides competence well that's always going to be themselves or parents which then means that parents need to have these wonderful discussions at school gates if, especially junior school, because if you've got a, a year five or year six who wants to create, there was about at least six WhatsApp groups of year five and year six today. There should be a parent there. Mm -hmm. But if a parent, um, if a child has been invited over for a play date or, and, or sleepover, and you don't allow mm -hmm. Fortnite, Instagram, TikTok, but that other child does, mm -hmm. you've got to say to that parent, very happy for my child to come over, but can I just say that when my child's in your house, yeah. I'd much mm. rather your child did not do this, this, this. That's, that's, that's hashtag orcs. That's, mm. that's tough. Mm. That Isn't is tough. it? Yeah. Because if you yeah. said, but if you equate that yeah. to swimming, oh, you've got a swimming pool. Well, aren't you lucky? My, my daughter loves swimming, but she wears armbands, doesn't go to the deep end. You'll be thanked for that because that's yeah. safeguarding. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We've never been that way with online, the online world. So you've got to have these awkward uh, conversations with other parents and stick to what you believe is the right for your child. Mm. Don't just let them wander aimlessly into it. So, yeah, it's, it's down to parents to, to have this... I said about level C, and that is that area, which is what we call unintended incompetence. They don't mean to do something, they just do it. Yeah. So they're behaving inappropriately by accident. And what I mean by that will be not adhering to age restrictions, possibly using random play, random com uh, communication, Minecraft, Roblox, all of them allow for that. You can restrict that, mm -hmm. then restrict it not taking regular breaks. It's interesting yes. talking today, I said, well, who's ever played games for continuously for over five hours and these hands go flying up? <laughs> so I, I'm honest with them. I said, well, look, just say you want to play a game for two hours, that's too long. Mm. But if you're allowed, break it down to half hour. Half hour, 10 minute break. 
ask permission to go back on. Half an hour, 10 minute break, ask. Have this involvement with your parents. Mm. So you might end up doing two hours, but you've got these breaks, which means you don't make mistakes because you're on it too long. Mm. And your parents can then be part of that as well. So there has to be this parental involvement the whole time. John, quick question. So obviously if you get children who spend above and beyond duration on their devices, is there any good strategies that the parents can use to try and wean them off, in a way, yeah. those devices slowly? Because I know that would be quite tough. Oh, too. 100%. Uh, very similar. You'd be the one involvement straight away. Yeah. If you're not involved, you're not going to wean them off it. Yeah. The other side to that is you'd have to look at connectivity. So you've got these, and you do that yourself. So if you look at connectivity, then you can reduce the connectivity, one via the device, which you can do that obviously through, uh, but you, with the iPhones, you do. we mentioned Google mm. Family Link, mm. we mentioned mm. Family Share. If you put all the settings in, um, obviously it allows you to actually set time limits. Brilliant. Okay? So you put that in place. But I would honestly have open discussions with the child about this. Physically, you've got that 20 minute, 10 minute break. Try and put that in place. If they breach it, you go back to the device, say, right, you're off it. Mm -hmm. Sounds harsh, but yeah. yeah. You've then got on your modem at home. On the modem at home, whether you're Sky, Talk, Talk, or BT, doesn't matter who you're with you'll have an account with that company. So go into your account. It'll show you all the devices that are using your Wi-Fi modem. Mm -hmm. You can select your child's device or Nintendo Switch and put time limits on there. Fantastic. Wow. Gosh. Wow, I did not know that. <laughs> I wish I'd known this yeah. before. <laughs> so you can do that. So yeah, you have this wonderful conversation, but there are little then technical things you can do and you don't have to, I'm not a geek, I'm really no. not. But and you can go to YouTube and it'll show you how to do it, but you yeah. can put time limits. And then I look at the human side of it. If you think of this wonderful school, they, they, I know the half term's coming up end of next week, but if you think the practical side of it, they're, they're at school, they get home, they've got extracurricular activity, great rugby team, great netball team, hockey team, swimming, etc. They might not get home till 5, 5.30, they then have tea, they then got homework to do, and hopefully bed is around about 9.30, perhaps for the older students, 10 o'clock. When are they getting two hours to be on again? Yeah. They're not. Yes. They're finding it. You know? Yeah. So therefore, you take the device out of the bedroom, which yes. we've always said, and then you say, well, I'll tell you what, Friday night at the weekend, mm. have a chat. Yes, you can have you done this, this. It's that type of monitoring and that mm. way to wean them off. But yeah, you can do it through te um, through the settings and you can do it. Um, if you know, at some, if you go onto, uh, I say my website, it's not, it's all free. <laughs> there's, there's advice on there where they can set things up, especially with the um, iPhone. The, the Apple, now the settings are brilliant for restricting. Mm. But you have to know the, it's the passcode. It's called the, it's called the uh, iPhone passcode the parents put on. Asking year five and six today, how many know? Over 60% knew their parents' wow. passcode. Mm. Wow. Don't let them know it. <laughs> you know, that's how you'd say that. So there are things that you can do. Because we're trying to create this, re what I call online resilience, um, mainly because of you want your child to be able to use it effectively, enjoyably, and create an online brand that's, uh, I've just noticed it's frozen, is that us? Mm. Or? Just no, checking. Fine. No, we're, we're fine, okay. we're, we're fine, fine. We're fine, John. But if you look at that, that the resilience will come from that bottom, which is happy to talk, and you know mm. and I know that Safer Internet Week next week is all about talking. Mm -hmm. But that's us as well, it's not just gonna be um, our children. So we want to create that resilience. I don't wanna stop them playing. No. Mm. I don't wanna take, because I'm a big firm believer in devices being used. But if you were to label all the dangers, you can see them coming mm. up on the screen now. That comes, these are the dangers that are there. It's not just gonna be about uh, unfortunate sexual and psychological grooming, which can occur. Right down the bottom, you'll see that digital tattoo damage. Now I know, I've had daughters that go through it. They, you write personal statements. I know they might be disappearing shortly for, for universities. But we want our children to have an online brand through their online behavior that keeps them safe. Part of that safety is not being deselected or being denied access to. Mm. Okay. That is happening, happening more now. And I'm gonna run out of time, but I'll say that because of the pandemic, you have predicted grades. Yes. yes. So two years ago for universities, because of predicted grades, nobody failed. 40% of students fail every year, don't get the grades, okay? Mm -hmm. Which meant nobody failed. They all got the predicted grades. They all had a place. Mm -hmm. So universities went, what do we do? They brought in cyber vetting and started to look at using companies, not for everybody, but they have the ability to then check on how that individual has been using social media to see whether or not they're suitable 
uh, candidate to be at that university. They were being denied places because of their online behavior. Gosh, they wow. had A stars, yeah. they, they had um, all the grades going, but the university said, no thank you. So for me, one of the most important bits will be if they're behaving in such a way that they're proud of their online brand and their digital tattoo is a place where they want it to be, that actually means everything above that they haven't got involved in. Mm. No. They haven't been talking to strangers. They yeah. haven't been bullying. Mm. They haven't been doing things that was going to give them a negative online brand. So we know what the dangers are. We don't want them involved in awful, um, inappropriate images of themselves. We call it sexting, which I don't like using that word because children and well, students would just ignore me. We don't want that. So if we can discuss it with them, it will help. Mm. And you'll see here that for me, all of those areas Right at the bottom, all of it is about awareness and advice. Mm. Awareness, and that's really for us. Yeah. Awareness is there for the parents. So if we're aware of these things, we can then advise. Mm. It, doesn't, it, it doesn't stagnate, it evolves, which means there are new threats the whole time, which can come from things like screen time, issues, cyber flashing, which is the uh, possibility of receiving um, images without request, which is the airdrop and the Bluetooth being mm -hmm. on iPhones. Mm -hmm. You've got child on child or student on student abuse now because of everyone's invited, but you did a wonderful perspective on, mm -hmm. I remember that. Mm -hmm. So for us to understand this as parents, so we can create this or understand online competence to create resilience. And that comes from parents. Mm -hmm. That can be reinforced by schools, but mm -hmm. it doesn't come from schools. And parents must understand that. It comes from us as parents. Because you've then got issues, and please, you know, you can, I, I send copies of this. Again, what I show is what can you do? Well, you've got resources, you've got the guidance that's there. You've got this discussion of true friends, not stranger dangers. Live streaming, two issues there for parents to understand. Live streaming, as we're doing now, mm. one, a lot of children might behave in a different way, perhaps even in an inappropriate way because they want to get more followers. So do as a screen oh. screen here. Yeah. Do it as a professional unit at home, whether oh. you becoming managers, if they're doing something, you, you've got a lot of young stars through live streaming, so it's not wrong. But then you've got streaming, um, and I, I, I mentioned, I'll be, unfortunately, the, the guy Andrew Tate, how many boys in school have gone, oh, what a hero he was. Mm. No, he wasn't. He was a misogynistic idiot. Mm. But I said the problem they've got is if, if they've liked or um, pressed a reshare, repost button yeah. for his podcast, that will link them to him. Mm. Yeah. So think when they're 18, 19, for a like, oh, yeah, it's a minefield. You I know? think that's the Definitely. scariest thing. It's, it's what you, you, you know, your preferences online, what they link you to, and it's an awareness yeah. that that happens. Yeah. And if you have this mm. open discussion with them, yeah. next week's about communication. And I use the phrase have an, uh, 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 keeping the corridor of communication open. Mm -hmm. Because if, they've got, if you've got that, what are you doing today? What are you doing? And it's not that long, as I said, if you think how many hours they could, should or can have online, mm. they shouldn't be there alone. We don't let them be alone when they're, uh, and it's part of my life. It, mm. I wanted my life as my daughters grew up. I wanted my life to be their life or part of their life so I could see what they're doing. Mm. And I enjoyed that. I, I, I don't use TikTok, Instagram, I, I'm, of course I wouldn't. I always joke that if I took a selfie and sent it to my daughters, they'd delete it. Of course they would. <laughs> you know, so it's not, yeah. it's not my life, but their life is my yeah. life. Yeah, of course. And yeah. for me, that's the important bit because there's all these issues. We, we've got these dangers there. We've got the advice I can give. But you can see right at the bottom is speak with your children and speak to the school and speak to other parents because that's the important bit is to keep this corridor open and the discussion after the awareness has kicked in from that, that's there. It's going to be there for, for a long time until, well, you know, so if we want to prevent online dangers, we've got to, parents have got to put these in place. If you don't, you, you leave a child to their own device. They go from C, as you quite rightly said, mm. all the way up. Mm. And we want to bring them back down towards the, the boring aim or perhaps <laughs> let's, go, let's mm. go dead center on that spectrum. Yeah. And that will be through parental involvement straight away. Um, I'm going to, have I got time to go through the dangers? I want to check because yes, cool. yes, if you look yes, at grooming, yeah. the reason mm -hmm. I want to put this is a lot of mm. parents ask me, well, you know, we know what grooming is. I'm not going to discuss the two case studies there, but if you look at uh, Kaylee and Brett, Brett Bedner, some uh, teachers mm. wouldn't be aware of. Mm. These are a 15 and 13 year old girl, girl and boy, uh, respectively, who lost their lives through online grooming. Mm. Now, I was involved in that in my previous career in, 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 at Scotland Yard for many, many, many years. 
Online predators exist, well, but the must understand is the grooming process it can be sexual, but it can be psychological. Mm. But it's also an enjoyable one because your child will be engaging with somebody who what they're going to do is pay compliments and be there saying how good you are and all this. They're not going to tell them to clean their bedroom or to walk the dog or uh, unload the dishwasher. It's full of compliments. So it's going to be an enjoyable process for the victim. It then becomes very ugly and exploitive when it's about meeting. And don't forget, online grooming, the end result will be that your child will be groomed to meet offline. It cannot happen. It must not happen. So we stress, or I stress, about only engaging with true friends. And true friends, by definition, are people who don't ask your name, don't ask where you go to school, where you live, or how old you are. There you go. Mm -hmm. And they'll be fellow students, they'll be friends from your rugby club as I played, or whether from swimming, the choir, or wherever. So online friends, as I, they, I hear a lot, there's no such thing. Mm. Yeah. They're online strangers. Yeah. They're not online friends. Right. They're other competitors, but your true friends are the only ones you should engage with. That prevents grooming because unfortunately, predators will hide in plain sight. So straight away, they're going to seize opportunity to use messaging services like WhatsApp to have that one-to-one -one control over an individual. Once they've got that, they can bombard with compliments and they can actually now create this wonderful rapport stage. So what parents, I think, should be aware of straight away, because predators will be using exactly the same platforms, that's games, um, social media and uh, gaming communities like Twitch, Discord, etc., and this goes from Fortnite, Mine, Minecraft and Roblox. It's not just some of the 18 plus games. What parents should look at straight away is what is the age? We'll go back to the age again. But if you've relented and the child is then playing, does it have messaging or chat capabilities? Because a lot of them you can turn that off. Okay. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Right. So you can mm. monitor, plus mm. you can turn it off. That's good. Uh, if they're live streaming straight away, well, come on, you know, what do you actually, can I be part of that? Shall we get a nice green screen? Shall I become your manager, get a good camera set up? Because there's money in live streaming. It's called mm. monetization. Yes. That's why we have these, mm. what used to be called YouTubers into influencers, <laughs> etc. So I get it. There might be a future career. Be involved, be there with them. Do you, does the actual game or app have parental controls, parental settings? Put them on straight away. And does it use GPS or location settings? So two things I'll say there. One, obviously turn GPS off. The other thing to do, uh, have a little game, is if you're, you've got a child that isn't a PlayStation or Xbox user but likes app games, so therefore the iPad, pick the iPad up, turn your internet off on the device, so no Wi-Fi, no mobile data. Can you still play the game? If you can, that means you're going to get no adverts and you're going to get no interaction with other users. Mm -hmm. And you play against the device, obviously. But if you cannot play the game, that means that game or app game is designed to one, have adverts, and two, for communication between random mm. users. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So you can test it, you can test the app straight away. Uh, and so you can say, right, you can have that one, but you can't have that one, right. which you were talking about weaning off and yeah, protecting. That's really good. Yeah. So straight away, you've got to understand predators will hide in plain sight. So what about things like uh, onto gaming issues? Well, here's the thing about gaming. There's positive results. This comes out from, believe it or not, from a lot of education research that math and reading skills are, yeah. are improved. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we can see that. And they improve teamwork, hand and eye functions, etc. So we know it's not all negative. However, however, <laughs> the way that a child will want to play a game means the negative effects would be far greater, which would be possible addiction, aggressive behavior. Mm. I put this in isolation from society, mm -hmm. uh, self-inflicted. They suddenly have fallen out of love with the sport they would play or the reading, they've gone to the game. Isolation from society enforced. If they're Snapchat users, Snap Maps will tell them that they're not invited to swimming because on the map it will show all their friends at a location and not them. Oh, wow. yeah. So you've got being let down by technology and of course you've got uh, uh, screen time as well. Two very quick cases. Uh, what's that, five years ago, six years ago, year, uh, year, a, a girl aged nine, Fortnite game addiction, and uh, awful case, she had to go into therapy. She's aged nine. It's incredible. That's incredible. So young. You yeah. know, they so won't so know young. about that, and I'll mention it to you uh, as parents, but the other side, what they will know is Rahman, who was the young 15-year-old millionaire who won the first ever yes. robot, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> Fortnite World yeah. Cup. 
oh, I want to be like him. Well, chances of that is pretty nil, yeah. uh, pretty low. But there's more chance you become addicted to the game because you've got to yeah. play it an awful lot. But yeah, there's, uh, there are these success stories. So we can see there with gaming, it can be positive, but there's an awful lot of negativity to it too. For me, cyber flashing is this hu huge new issue. Um, in many ways, that the highest percentage of victims are teenage girls. And what we're talking about here is the fact that they're being their, their device, and it's going to be an Apple, it's going to be an iPhone here through Bluetooth and AirDrop. That they're sitting on the bus or they're somewhere walking from school and they get a notification of an image being sent to them. You know what I'm talking about. It doesn't happen oh, with Android yeah. devices. So the, um, this is where we get the expression, if you don't mind me saying this time of day, dick pics or nudes. They get sent, they receive them. But now we have to look at the, uh, if, if you, in many ways, the, the actual, uh, uh, um, if you like, the behavior of the receiver. One, why could it come to the device? Mm. Well, that's because Bluetooth is on and AirDrop has been set. AirDrop you can set to either off, friends only, or everyone. So as a parent, I would say to my child, have that, set it oh, off. And yeah. if the iPhone, um, if you've done the passcode and the settings, they cannot change that you can do that for them. Bluetooth, they'll probably want that because they want to listen to music walking to and from school or going to or, <laughs> or wherever, when they're out. Yeah. So there's ways you can do. The third thing I'd say to parents is de have a look at your child's phone, depersonalize it. If you go into settings and about, it might show John Taylor's phone, iPhone. Have a look at the name of it. We go to edit, you can put that into numbers mm -hmm. because most people who target people to send images to will go open their Bluetooth and you can see other devices around you and you see a child's name or a girl's oh, name. When you're, yes. yes, of course, it comes okay. up as yeah. available. Yeah. Now, when you're on a, lo a local number, I might be yeah. deferring yes. the sending of the image to somebody else, but it mm. means my child's not going to get it. So yeah. depersonalize the iPhone or the iPad. Really it's very easy yeah. to do. And of course, just tell them, as I've said here, you know, if you want a picture from a friend, just say, oh, that's such a good, I'll tell you what, I'll turn my airdrop on, send me the picture and then turn it off again. Yeah, yeah. So we're getting to understand the device a bit mm. better than the, perhaps some parents uh, know at the moment, because it's that fear of missing out, the FOMO, you mm. all know, that yeah. means that's why they open it up. I wouldn't, I, I'm, I'm worried I'm gonna get a, a, a virus. I, don't, I didn't expect that, delete it. Yeah. Children don't act that way. No. So there's massive pressure and stress on them, which is, it, it's sad, but it's there at the moment. So that's why cyber flashing is a, a new law um, um, uh, uh, being created. Uh, technology lets us down. I've touched on this before. Um, in the sense that if you have your location settings on and a child is uh, posting on Instagram, anybody can find out where she lives or he lives. It's the same with Snapchat. It's also the same, unfortunately, if you have a Gmail account. And uh, for parents, and when I talk about a Gmail account, a lot of schools will have Gmail accounts. Google education is completely separate to Google personal use. Google education is ring fence to protect any email users. So don't worry about, so, oh, my daughter's got, uh, no. Please don't worry about the educational Gmail. Well, there might be that, I don't know whether you use Gmail here. Uh, no, no, Microsoft. Oh, you got Microsoft, yeah. so you got yeah. Outlook. Yeah. Yeah. So a personal Gmail. So the reason I say this is if you take a, um, if you've got a, a Gmail, you've got a, a Google account, there's a thing called timeline. If you take a selfie um, and your GPS is on, Google will grab it. You can just see it on the screen, three uh, shots of my, um, you can test this out. If you go into your, uh, or your child's uh, Google account, log in, password, and go into manage my account, you will see timeline. And if it hasn't been turned off, all the pictures and selfies ever taken with that device will be seen to you, even if they've been deleted from the device. So you now know that all these wow. pictures that they've been taking as selfies have been grabbed by Google and gone to the Google Cloud, as they have by the Apple phone for the iCloud. They haven't been saved, they haven't been shared, they have, they've just been taken. Now they don't have file names, but they do exist electronically. Now the issue there is that when those cyber vetting happens in the years to come for university and jobs, you can, say you, Electronically, through an algorithm, you can find the existence of those images. They do that through facial recognition. So if there is one that they've taken that it's a bit inappropriate, it'll, the electronic algorithm will find it in years to come. This is awareness. This is why we need to sit down and say, right, you can have a device, but that's turned off, that's turned yeah, off, you don't do yeah. this and you don't do that. 
That's why it's so important to make sure we understand about the, the technological issues as well as a parent to be able to hand that device over and say, right, that's been set so you can't do it. We need to do that the whole time. So awareness is definitely key there. Online bullying, it's the oldest, isn't it? We know bullying uh, occurs. Why does it take place? Well, it, bullies think they're anonymous. Lack of empathy, it's all up there. Where things have changed very recently is the issue of online bullying. We use the expression cyber. You will now know that it gets described as online bullying far more. Why? Physical bullying, it, the school policy doesn't allow usage of phones, obviously, but if they've got a phone in their back pocket and a fight occurs, you've seen it enough, they'll film it and they'll mm. post it online. Same with verbal and emotional through messaging. So suddenly, the majority of bullying is now known as online bullying because it's either on WhatsApp, YouTube, TikTok, or Instagram. Then you've got the issues of banter. Now, banter, it, it, it isn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because we know, you know, they say, oh, hashtag bants. No, it's not. It's bullying. Mm -hmm. And this is more pressure and stress on children because it's about supporting each other being good, true friends and making sure reporting and telling isn't an issue. It's not being a snitch. It's exactly what they should be doing. And that's the encouragement they will get from me, the teachers, and must be from you as well, that they must do it. I touch on this uh, only because of what's happened recently in the press um, about a high percentage. Yet that's always been the case. Mm of pornography. I always show off with my daughter here. She's, uh, she did swim for uh, uh, GB Synchro. She was a member of the Reading Club. Oh. Uh, but these are nice pictures. But it also mm. shows a, a, a picture of two boys taking a selfie at a terrorist incident, having been told to leave the area. Okay. And I, what I've been doing with the students today, especially the younger ones, is trying to get them to understand the, the expression inappropriate selfie. What mm. is it? Taking a selfie within their school uniform would be inappropriate because yes. it gives yeah. information away. Yeah. But of course, they talk about, well, parts of your body. I said, well, that's illegal. I'm yeah. sorry, no, you can't do that. That's the problem with inappropriate. I said, unless you speak to a parent and say, w w can I take a picture just like this? You, they've got to ask permission. Mm. That's the important bit because it's somebody else's decision whether something's inappropriate. And that really sums up the future for about when they actually get cyber vetted. For parents, again, please don't think these were uh, videos, that, uh, well, sorry, slides that I showed to that I, I didn't. This highlights TikTok challenges that I touched on. They're, they're, these are so uh, physically demanding, but also the fact that they're too easy to do and they're very dangerous. We've had deaths that you'll know yeah. in the press yeah, that have been about very high the, profile. Very high profile mm. indeed. There are many. Now, bear in mind, TikTok, one, it's Chinese. Two, they don't create the challenges users do. But it's it puts pressure on um, the vulnerable children who want to have this online validation, look what I did, they might get more followers. It's that type of peer-on-peer -peer pressure, student-on-student, child-on-child pressure that gets them to do it. Rather than me talk to students about the issues of, uh, of obviously, they're, they're, they're dangerous, I touch on the fact of the digital permanence of the video. Mm. The fact that it's mm. always going to be there, showing them acting in a way that I believe and could be believed by other people to be actually inappropriate online behaviour. So there is the possibility of physical danger, the aerosol challenge, the tourniquet mm. challenge, etc. I won't go into details. They're, they're there on my website if you want to read about them. But it's about the fact that you're creating a video that's permanent and yeah. you don't want that to be part of the online brand. So, yeah, there's awareness there for us and the discussions must be in the open, too. But you can see this pressure and stress that's put on a lot of children at a very, very young age. The pornography side of it, what I will say is this. We've got sexual experimentation, the fact that they're checking about their ages. When I was very young, there would be magazines on the top shelf. You mm. know that. And, well, you're younger than me, but that's what. And you'd be looking, you'd be curious. Well, we get that. But what we've got to understand now, the danger here is if they're searching, it's a deliberate search or accidental search. It's a big difference is where technology does let us down. So very, very quickly. If you're on Sky, if you're on uh, Talk Talk, what the government brought in a few years ago, this has nothing to do with the online safety bill, was that um, there must be restrictions. You, ha you, you, you automatically opted out. You've got to opt in. And, you know, at home, I can't do a search on, on my Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, that's not the same with mobile data. Mobile data, three, or Vodafone, they don't have those, those restrictions. So if they've got a, if they're able to 
um, hotspot or for parent, uh, parent device, they will be able to access. But then you've got to work out in your mind, well, why are they behaving this way? Mm -hmm. So now we're looking at deliberate searches. Well, what are you doing with that search of that image? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. So you've really got to understand that way. So don't be too panicky when you've got a teenage uh, son or daughter who might be you know, experimenting and looking at pictures of um, um, age equivalent boys or girls. <sighs> Unfortunately, if they're under 18 and it is a sexy picture, it's against the law. So that's been brought in. So you really have to get involved. Don't panic about this though, please, please, please. And as you touched on about restrictions, mm. we've got parental controls on devices. So you might have data, but if you've set the restrictions to non-explicit uh, type material, they shouldn't be able to get there. So really do look at the restrictions oh, and the parental settings as well. But, but again, on. it is about having that conversation. Oh, hugely. Well, and it? frank yeah. conversation yeah. as well, yeah. actually, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's not... It, it, it's not panicking. Mm. It's, no. it's something that's going because to be quite natural. Because we have it in school, don't we? We yeah. do for it's our life learning yeah. and PSHE. We have those yeah. honest But it has to carry on at home, yeah. I think. Oh, well. totally. Yeah, definitely. Mm. And knowing that, obviously, unfortunately, if they look at pictures of some of the age equivalent, that could be breaking mm. the laws. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's hard to say to a child, but yeah. it's true, and we need to be there. Yeah, coming towards that sort of the end, the screen time on well-being. Uh, I put this up there for obvious reasons, because I touched on this with the year five and year six. I use the expression good and poor rather than good and bad. And the only reason I say that is what we changed around during uh, the pandemic, because you'll get lots of uh, students say, well, I'm doing sc uh, virtual schooling for six hours. Why can't I do this? Yeah. Yeah. They're completely okay. different. So I say, well, good will be education, family time, projects, etc. Poor is that vegetative uh, just in front of a screen and absent minded <laughs> scrolling games, social media, etc. Plus, what I don't do, uh, you can decide yourself because there's so much research on how long should. Now, personally, as I said, if they're doing homework and they've got this, they haven't got time. But yeah. if you say to a child, or uh, you know, it's written down oh, 6 to 13, th two hours a day, whoa, 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 whoa. Where are you going to get those two hours from? If you start to have this sort of discussion, but say no, you know, Monday to Friday, no, mm -hmm. it's homework time perhaps. Um, so I use that expression, technology is a privilege, it's not a right. Mm. And stick yeah. to that, the fact that we are in charge. You know, yeah. They might have great knowledge of the devices and, and even the games they're playing, but it's gonna be a privilege, not a right. So it's not, oh, I'm 13, I can now use it for four hours. No, that's not mm. the case. That's gotta be there because for me, screen time's the most important. Why? Because of excessive use. Mm. If you use it to a degree that, or they do, to excess, they will, well, create mistakes. Has that wonderful thing on the M4 going down to Bristol, we'll always say, tiredness yeah. yes. can kill. No, it can't. It's the mistakes you make because you're tired. Mm. Same here, because they might add somebody they don't know, say something they don't mean, start to look at 18 plus sites, because that's the consequences of excessive use. So we've got to step back and say, well, okay, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. As you quite rightly touched on, we can use parental controls mm. to restrict connectivity. You can say that you can do this, you can do it for 20 minutes, half an hour, take a break. We've got to have those open conversations about it, especially around gaming because you've got live opponents, which puts the extra danger of grooming and mm -hmm. bullying. You've got purchases, loot boxes, V-Bucks, them spending your money if you put a card on it. Mm. Uh, mm. And then you've got yeah. that also 18 plus. Mm. Do they become frightened? Do they become addicted? Do they become aggressive? Mm. So there's a lot to really look at there because of screen time. So if we target screen time rather than anything else, really will help preventing a child acting or behaving in a way that could be inappropriate or even illegal. And it's going back to those restrictions on the devices yep. themselves because mm -hmm. You know, we, we set the majority of our prep is set on, on assignments yeah. and, and a, a lot of it is online as well. Well, you think naturally your child is up there doing their prep when, yeah. you know, they could be using that allowed screen time to do other things. So I know a lot again. of parents in some schools, not this one, but other schools, they're, they're, they're the parents who have been very reluctant to say, well, I don't want my child being on a device because mm. you're telling them, to, no, 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 this is, this is, we're, this is 2023. <laughs> yeah. This yes. is where we should yeah. be. Let's yeah. not be mm. technophobes. We've got to say this is their future. So yeah, and I'm with you on that. So mm. it's about behavior, devices, mm. everything, but nothing's designed to be dangerous. It's behavior. Yeah. Because of this region for me, if you think about online exploitation, we know, I started with that, with all the possibilities. There has to be a build-up towards possible exploitation mm -hmm. and hurt. That's where well-being comes in. So their well-being will, uh, will suffer 
even though they haven't yet been groomed or bullied. It's just the fact that it's the build up of pressure. So you'll notice a change in them. That could be anything from um, isolation, not using the device as much, or they're doing things that you, they're, they're, they're secretive. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the screen goes down, that, that, that type of thing, mm. or you walk in a room. Look at that as a signal and as a sign, not that they're being groomed or bullied, but there's well-being issues, or mm. their phone is vibrating an awful lot. I mean, it does anyway, but be, be aware. Ask them, well, what was that? Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna have to have these open conversations with them because the well-being issue is huge here before the possibility of any sort of um, exploitation. I've pressed the wrong key. There you go, there's a technical thing. It shows I'm not a geek, you see. <laughs> Finally, student on student. Yeah, there's far more likely, as you know, uh, you've done a wonderful perspective on that. It could be anything. Uh, it's going to be within the same platforms. It's going to be in the same social media and the gaming. That there could be sexual comments, sexual harassment, physical type. I'm not going to show the videos, but there's loads of videos out there, which is why we're now talking about online uh, b bullying rather than cyber, because these are going to be put in messaging areas. They're going to be put in messaging groups, social media, mm -hmm. or games. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a high likelihood because of, as you well touched on, which was the site Everyone's Invited, where it allowed anonymous reporting. Mm. And there was such a high percentage of schools. I mean, it was up, up into 6,000 now that have been there. But this is all forms of the exploitation we've discussed, whether it's gonna be bullying or other types of abuse. But remember that the chances are it could be filmed, even mm. by filming a screen or mm. doing a screen capture. So therefore it's gonna be uploaded elsewhere. But there's such, there's more likelihood of a uh, student being abused or harassed or hurt or exploited by another student rather than stranger danger. As long as we have that in mind, I'm gonna move on from that because we've touched on it now and I'm, I'm aware of time because of the issue of their online brand. Their online brand is so important. So if we could really concentrate on that, for me, I think that is the most important. So we know about their barriers, or you touched on that, I'm pretty certain. There's pressure, we're gonna ask them to support each other, have, have fun online, but to make sure they're willing to have the open discussion. See, mm. to begin next week at this school with Safer Internet, they continue mm. at home. Mm. So there isn't gonna be a barrier to speaking or reporting the whole time. We want them to, ha to relieve some of the pressure. I want, I've told them, tell your parents to deal with it, take the pressure off you, and hopefully that will come through at home too. Because of that digital uh, tattoo, it is permanent. They create profiles, they create accounts, they will be judged uh, by some of those accounts and profiles that they create. That is just another part of our life. Mm, That's yeah. part of our identity. And because what we now understand is that their curiosity might mean that they'll discuss something that maybe mm. they shouldn't, but it depends on whether or not they can. So what I say is this, as long as they understand that if they're gonna behave in an inappropriate way, like a comment or a group that they create, or hear the acknowledgement of somebody else, like the Andrew Tate scenario, they've got, to, they've got to understand digital permanence. The fact that anything and everything done on the internet is permanent, cannot be deleted. And this is what they're gonna get judged on. That is the digital tattoo. That is the digital footprint that they may, may get judged on. As you see here in 2001, universities were paying a lot of money for people mm. to stay away because of the predicted grades and nobody failed. So, wow, we'll give you money to defer. Nothing really changed last year for 2022, and by all accounts, I did read a report, the catch-up, because the amount of students waiting to go in, pay about five years mm. until wow. we possibly get back to where we were uh, three years ago. That's tough, because mm. normally it was get the grades, you're in. Yeah, Not there's any... a huge demand on places this year, yeah. Exactly, mm. so that's gonna continue. So we wanna really look at reducing this risk, which includes their, uh, the, the tattoo. So. As I started with the cycle to reduce risk, what we do as parents, mm. we understand the apps and the games that they're using, even try to play them perhaps even ourselves. Please, I'm not saying go and become a, a Fortnite <laughs> aficionado, just go and understand what they're doing. Gain knowledge, I and mean, that way you can then educate and influence their behavior. If you influence their behavior so they're actually going online, enjoying it, staying and being safe, that builds resilience, that reduces risk. It is a cycle, because mm. new devices, new apps, new games. But stick with that. There's loads on my, uh, which I send to the school. The school we're putting out what I call cloud bursts, little reminders. Mm. Have a look at them. They are good um, conversation openers, should we say, which would be ideal for next week. But thank you for listening.
thank Fantastic. you so much. Oh, John, brilliant. I've got so much to think about <laughs> now. I mean, the, the part you talked about, the digital um, permanence, yeah. I mean, that for me, that's really an eye-opener. Yeah, I, I thought if you deleted something, it was gone. I know it's not, but... And the tagging as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. When you take the photos, yeah. to have that map mm. as well is... Shocking, actually. Yeah, and it's one of the better ways to approach it with your children. If you just go in and talk about stranger danger or, or sexting, they're not going to want to talk to you. No. no. If you talk no. about, oh, do you, do you, are you still wanting to go and study veterinary or be an engineer mm. or go, if you start saying, well, yeah. hang on a minute, you might not. Mm. So you have it that way as a discussion about their online behaviour rather than going straight in with stranger danger. Gosh, lots to think about. Food for thought, definitely. So much for everybody to take away. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Um, I don't think we've got any questions, have we? But if anybody does think of, of anything after, they can always email in yeah. and we'll, yeah. we'll try to answer and we might come back to you. Yeah. But, so you've got this afternoon, you're going to be seeing the, the older Nine years. Nine to 13. Yeah, and that's this, you know, some of the points that oh, you've yeah. raised here. Yeah. Hugely important. I look forward thank to it. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.